Okay, our study on the Ten Commandments. We're on the Fourth Commandment. And we've got a lot of scripture to look at, so we have to have you maybe pause yourself, but we're going to move on. Exodus 20, verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it, the seventh day, Thou shalt, do, thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is in with thy gates. For in six days the Lord made the heaven and earth and the sea, and all that there is. Rest of the seventh day, wherefore the Lord blessed the seventh day and hallowed it. So, the seventh day is a mark of the creation, not something for evolution. They don't believe in the creation. The seventh day is a Jewish. We're in the Old Testament under Exodus. God speaking to the nation of Israel. It's one particular day. But yet there's Sabbath year. There's Sabbath times. But, but we'll look at that in a moment. Deuteronomy 5.12. What we just read is one Sabbath day. The last day of the week. No work. And yet Jesus said, if you do a circumcision on the seventh day, because that's the eighth day from a male child being born, you have not broken the law. He said, do you not bring your animals out to get water on the Sabbath day? So Deuteronomy 5, 12. Keep the Sabbath day to sanctify it, as the Lord thy God has commanded thee. Six days thou shalt labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt do, thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy ma maidservant, nor thy ox, nor thy ass, nor any of thy cattle, <clears throat> nor the stranger that is in with thy gates, that thy manservant, and thy maidservant may rest all as well as she thou. So, it's a day of no working. And there are people called the Seventh Day Adventists who meet on the seventh day, the Sabbath day. And yet, here in Florida, their hospital is fully functional. And I've been in their hospital several times. Fully functional on the seventh day. And you're not even to work an ass. You're not even working work an ox. Your manservants, your maidservants, your nurses, your doctors are not to work. So the seventh day event is according to their hospital on the seventh day that they believe. They're in violation. They found a man picking up sticks on the Sabbath day. And God said, kill him. Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. The seventh day we read. Acts chapter 1. Verse number 12. Then returned they unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey. And the Sabbath day journey is about 4,854 feet. That's what the tradition of, you can only go that far. And if you went 4,855 uh, feet, they would chastise you. I mean, the disciples were walking through the uh, field of corn and they're rubbing the, the husk and they got all upset. Jesus healed on the Sabbath, and they got upset. And yet Jesus did no work on the Sabbath to heal him. What work? Did he call him into the office and sit him down in the examination tape? No, he just spoke the word. One time he spit, one time he made clay. So that aggravated the Jews much when Jesus did work on the Sabbath. Chapter 13, verse 14. Chapter 13, verse 14 of Acts. 
And when they departed from Perga, they came to Antioch in Poseidon and went in the went in the synagogue on the Sabbath day, also sat down. So the Jews on this side of Calvary are meeting on the seventh day in their synagogue is the day that they meet. The seventh day Adventists also meet in their whatever their building's called on the Sabbath day. Verse 27. They that dwelt in Jerusalem and their rulers because they knew him not, nor yet the voices of the prophets which are read every Sabbath day. So not only did they go to temple, not only did they go to synagogue, but when they get to the synagogue, the, the Old Testament is read, though they don't know it. 42. And when the Jews were going out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought that, that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. So there are Gentiles here obeying the Jewish Sabbath. And they're like, next week, during temple, God, can you show up with your apostles, your disciples, and teach us more next church Sabbath? I was going to say Sunday. But next Saturday, can you come back and teach? So there are Jews and Gentiles in the book of Acts following the Sabbath. 44. The next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. And the Jews got upset. Here's the Gentiles on the Jewish day, and they're listening to God being preached by the apostles and by the disciples. So are there Gentiles who follow the Sabbath? I just read it to you. Yes, Acts 13. It's a Jewish holiday. If you want to call it a holy day. Take off the holiday, put holy day. 15.21. Acts 15.21. And Moses of old time had in every city them that preach him being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy were also read on the Sabbath day and the prophets. The Sabbath day, the seventh day, was the time that the Jews met in the synagogue, what they call temple, and they heard their writings of Moses and the prophets being taught to them. And there were Gentiles that would show up too. 1613 and on the sabbath we went out of the city by the riverside where prayer was wont to be made and we sat down and spake unto the women which resorted thither so here's a here's a mark of time the sabbath day this is the last day of the week and a gathering together by the riverside and they're not in temple they're not in synagogue they're not in a building and they're having a prayer meeting 17.2 And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them, and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the Scripture. And it, verse 1 is the synagogue. Paul knew at what time the Jews gathered together. He knew on the Sabbath day the Jews would be together in one place, and he would go there and to teach and preach to them out of the Old Testament scriptures about Jesus. Now we're going to find the scriptures that Paul does not tell any Christian, does not tell any church member. On this side of Calvary, we are not to honor the Sabbath day. That is not a church doctrine. We found Jews doing it. Okay, that's what God told them to do. We find Gentiles doing it. We read that in Acts. But you will not find a Christian in the Bible obeying the Sabbath, the law. It is not found. Paul used the Sabbath to preach and teach the Jews. There have been people upset with my family because we will not go to church on Daytona 500 race day, Sunday. Because we're at the Daytona 500 and we are preaching and teaching to the groups of people that come for the races. 
They're going to be gathered at the Daytona 500 in May, I think it is, in masses of people. And we don't go to the 500. We don't take part in the 500. We don't watch the race. We go there to preach to the people. We just had last week. We had a gathering of, of the bike week, Oktoberfest. Now, we're not bikers. We're not part of the bikers. We don't drink like the bikers. We don't dress like the bikers. But we are there with the bikers gathered together to preach and teach like Paul did at the synagogue on the Sabbath. And people told him, oh, you ought not hang out with the bikers. You ought not hang out with the race fans. Why? Paul hanged out with the Jews where the Jews were gathered together. Proverbs says, go to the place of concourse. You ought not to be at the farmer's market. That's where the people are. And where the people were is where Paul was. And where I pray, say, Lord God, Daytona Beach or in the surrounding area, show me where the people are so I can go teach and preach the gospel. 18.4. 18.4. We got a lot of scripture. 18.4. And he reasoned in synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded the Jews and the Greeks. There's the Jews and Greeks again. They're on the Sabbath. They're meeting at the Jewish temple. And Paul is using that opportunity and that time to address the people who are there. We go, and a lot of people get upset, we go on Christmas Eve night. We go to the Catholic church outside on the sidewalk and we pass out Catholic gospel tracts to people attending or going to Christmas Mass. At midnight we're not taking part in the mass we're not Catholics but the Catholics are gathering together to go to their mass to their church and we will meet outside the church on the sidewalk and we will give them the gospel without partaking of their religious means we are saved Paul does not take part in in the law Paul is not saved according to the law he's saved by the, the testimony and the merits of Jesus Christ alone, but that's where the Jews are, and that's where the Gentiles are right now. Let's go where they are. So don't go to a Christian, you know, who's going somewhere where, you know, that's not where you ought to be. Now, we don't go inside of a bar. I would not go into any play. I stand outside. I won't go into 500 and preach. I'll stand outside the 500 and preach. I wouldn't buy tickets or anything. So, now say Colossians 2.16. And what we're looking at here is the only, the only New Testament reference of Sabbath. Colossians 2.16. Let no man therefore judge you in me or in drink, or respect of a holy day, or of new moon, or the Sabbath day, which are shadows of things to come. When the tribulation comes and the church has been raptured before the tribulation period, there's the rapture, <coughs> there's the tribulation period. In the tribulation period, there will be, you will have a meat diet that you can eat and not eat things. You'll have a drink diet that you can drink, you cannot drink. You will have holy days and, and you will have the Feast of the Tabernacles. You will have the Passover. You will have those in the tribulation period, but not the church age. You will have the new moon, the, the new moon marking the first of the month. That will be in the tribulation period, not the church age. You will have Sabbath days again. Jesus said, as far as the tribulation, pray that your flight be not in the Sabbath. Why? Airports will be closed. The airplanes will be grounded. Now, what is the tribulation period? What does the Bible call that period? Jacob's trouble. Who is Jacob? He's the father of the 12 tribes of Israel. What is the tribulation period? It's the time of the Jews again and their law. Not the grace. Not the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, study and show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. That's the only places where the Sabbath shows up in the New Testament. Matthew 28. Matthew 28, 1. 
Matthew 28, 1. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn, uh, toward the first day of the week. All right, so here's the Sabbath, the seventh day, the last day, Sabbath, Jewish, some Gentile. Now we have on this side of Calvary, this side of the empty tomb, we have the first day after the Sabbath. What is the first day after the Sabbath? It's the first day of the week. It's Sunday. We have a new day in history. It is no more the Sabbath day. It's that first day of the week. A division between Sabbath and the first day of the week. Mark 16, 9. Knows where these are. These are on this side of Calvary. Mark 16, 9. Now when Jesus was risen early, the first day of the week. John 20. John 20. I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to tell you right now. John 20, verse 1. Seven day Adventists are wrong. They think we're wrong. They're wrong, according to the scriptures. John 20, verse 1, on the first day of the week, verse 19, verse 19, and the same day it even began the first day of the week, when the doors were shut and the disciples were assembled for the fear of the Jews, Jesus stood in the midst. The resurrection, first day of the week, the, Jesus shows up to the disciples, the first day of the week, the church on this side of Calvary meet on the first day of the week, not the Sabbath. We meet on Sunday, according to the scriptures. Now let's keep going. Acts 20, verse 7. Look how late we're in Acts now. Acts 20, verse 7. We went through all the passages in Acts about the Sabbath. Acts 20, verse 7. And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them. So when it comes to the Christians, Paul is meeting on the first day of the week and they are breaking bread in fellowship and they're preaching. What on earth is Paul doing on the Sabbath day? Go all the world and preach the gospel. Well, people say, you're supposed to bring the lost people to church. No, Paul went to the lost people and he went to church to the same people. The opportunity to witness Christ was in the synagogues on the Sabbath. The time to preach to the church was on the first day of the week. There it is. What more? First, first Corinthians 16. First Corinthians 16, verse 2. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store as God had. First day of the week for the church. Is to gather up the money and gather yourself up to be meeting together. There it is. It's not a Sabbath. It's not the seventh day. As prescribed by the law. Paul says we preach to the church on the first day of the week. And when the first day of the week comes, you better have your offerings ready. The Sabbath will go on the Sabbath to witness Jesus. To the lost people. The Sabbath is for those who are lost and don't know Christ. First day of the week for those that are saved and know Christ. There it is. Genesis 2. Genesis 2. Genesis 2 1. Let's see what the Sabbath is. And by the way, as we're reading Genesis, Genesis was not known in writing until long after Exodus 20. The writer of Genesis is Moses, and Moses is writing Genesis from God in Exodus. And where, where he, Moses says to God, say, God, let me see your glory. And God says, listen, no man can see my face and live. And Moses is up on a mountain, he gets the oracles, he gets the Ten Commandments, and he gets writing Genesis. Genesis was not written. Job is the first book written in the Bible. Genesis comes after Exodus 20. So as far as writing, officially, by the word of God, 
come through Moses. Genesis 2. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished. And all the hosts of them. Creation. Not evolution. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made, creation, seven days. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified, set the seventh day apart. Because that in it he had rested from all his work, which God created and made. So what were the Jews supposed to do with the Sabbath day? The Jews were supposed to be a light on top of the mountain. The light on top of the hill. They were supposed to shine and declare and say, What is this day that you guys worship? This is the seventh day we honor and have Jehovah, Lord God, creator of heavens and earth. And this day is the mark that six days God made the heavens, earth, animals, plants, humans, everything. And on that seventh day of the creation, God, he didn't go to bed. He, he looked back, he said, it's all good. And that seventh day he sanctified, he set that one day apart. And he says, I like it. It's good. Make this day holy. So when he chooses himself out a people of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the 12 tribes, he says, I want you guys to honor me, your creator, not only to heavens and earth, but as creator of you as a nation. I want you to honor me with your Sabbath, and your Sabbath will mark God as creator. And it would be a great joke for anybody to say, I honor the Sabbath and follow evolution or theistic evolution. I don't know anybody does, but that would be a joke because the Sabbath shows the created work of God and the work that God rested from. And the Jews were to rest like God rested. Nobody works. But yet, you can take your animals out and water them. You can do circumcision. You can go for a short walk. But the creation is in the Sabbath, and the Sabbath is in the creation. So, it marks creation. Exodus 31. Exodus 31. Exodus 31. Verse number 13. Speak, though, also unto the children of of the seventh day Adventists. No. Speak thou also unto the children of Gentiles. No. No. Wrong. Speak on also the children of Israel. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, who's Israel. My Sabbath, God's Sabbath, plural. He shall keep, for it is a sign between me, God, and you, Israel, throughout your generations, that ye may know that I am the Lord that does sanctify you. He set apart the seventh day. He set apart the children of Israel. He says to the children of Israel, throughout all your generations, that Sabbath is the mark. I am the creator, and I am God. And it is a sign. We'll get to that in a moment. It is a sign. It is a sign. We'll get to that in a moment. Ezekiel 20. Ezekiel 20. you got to get the Bible right. You don't get the Bible right, you're going to mess yourself up. Exodus 20. I mean, Ezekiel 20. Excuse me. Ezekiel 20, verse 12. Moreover, also I, God, gave them, the Jews, my Sabbath to be a sign between me, God, and them, 
Who's of them? Verse 13. But the house of Israel. We are not talking about Gentiles. In the book of Acts, the Gentiles joined the Jews, but the subject when is the Sabbath is the children of Israel, them that they may know that I am the Lord that sanctified them. You know what that Sabbath is for the Jew? I am God and God's the creator. It's that plain and simple. The nation of Israel is saying, when they, when they were to enjoy their Sabbath, they would say, we are worshiping Jehovah, the creator, and the creator made everything in six days. On the seventh day, we rest. Like Jehovah rests. And it is a sign. Ezekiel 20.20. Ezekiel 20.20. And hallow, make holy, my Sabbath, plural, and they shall be a sign between me and you, the Jews, that ye may know that I am the Lord your God. So go ask these people that are covenant keepers and of the seventh day and of the Sabbath, and ask them, what's the Sabbath for? Number one is for Jews. Number two is for a sign. And number three, it's to show for that God is the God of the Jews. 1 Corinthians 122. 1 Corinthians 122. Not everybody believes this. Ready? 1 Corinthians 122. For the Jews, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. For the Jews, Abraham, Isaac, Israel. Require a sign. And the Greeks seek after wisdom. Have we not read? Have we not read in Exodus and in Ezekiel that the Sabbath is a sign? And the signs are for Jews, not the seventh day Adventists. Not for the Gentiles. What were the Gentiles doing in the book of Acts showing up on the seventh day in temple? That's the day that the Jews met. That's the day they were worshiping God and the Gentiles were there worshiping God. It doesn't say they followed the Sabbath. That was just a, That's like a, a lost man coming to the church on a Sunday morning. Because he comes to the church, is he saved? No. Does he take part in the celebrations of God? No. He's there because that's the day they meet. Just because you go to church does not make you a Christian. And you can be there because Christians are there. See? Signs are for Jews and the Sabbath is a sign. Exodus 31. Exodus 31. Don't you see it's so simple? It is not for Gentiles. It is for Jews. Exodus 31. 16. Wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their children of Israel generation for a perpetual yeah, perpetual covenant. It is a sign between me, God, and and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth. And the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. And he gave Moses the, the, the tablets and the, the writings. Where can you go wrong with what we read black and white? Sabbath is not for a Christian. It is for Gentiles who are not saved, who go to be with a congregation that's worshiping God. And when you are saved in the Bible, on this side of Calvary, you meet in fellowship and hear preaching on the first day of the week. 
And the first day of the week, God said, let there be light. And guess who the light is? According to John 1. Jesus Christ. It's that plain and simple. Exodus 16, 26. Exodus 16, 26. Uh, Leviticus 23, 24. Leviticus 23, 24. I'm sorry. I Leviticus 23, 24. Ye shall do no servile work therein, but ye shall offer an offering made unto fire unto the Lord. Well, let's read verse 24. It's speaking to the children of Israel, say, In the seventh month, on the first day of the month, Shall ye have a Sabbath, a memorial blowing of trumpets? Uh oh, here's a non-Saturday Sabbath. This Sabbath would be the what I said, the first day of the month on the seventh month. It may be a Monday. It, it, on, Sabbath is not always on a Saturday. There's another Sabbath. So. Do the seventh day Adventists on the Jewish calendar on the seventh month? Do they fellowship and have the first day as their Sabbath? Do they shut down their hospital and say we cannot meet on Saturdays? We cannot do no servile work on Saturdays. And on the seventh month, on the first day of that month, we got to close down our hospital because we cannot do no servile work. Send the patient home. Come back on the second. No survival work. All right, for the hospital. They got a hospital here in Florida. Daytona Beach, Florida, and Deland, Florida, and other places. Survival work. You cannot take a temperature. You cannot change the sheets. You cannot minister. You cannot cook. Now, I'm picking on the seven-day Adventists because seven-day Adventists, it's in their name. They're not Jewish. They proclaim to be Jews, and they're not Jews, and they've been found to be liars, according to Revelation, and according to the doctors we're teaching right now. I'm proving to you that the seven-day Adventists are liars. They're trying to steal the name and the identity of the Jews. And that's a sin. Because no... Well, not as I say, many of the Jehovah, many Jehovah, many of the seven day adventures are not of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And on this side of Calvary, it's the first day of the week. Leviticus 24 8. Leviticus 24 8. Every Sabbath ye shall set in order before the Lord continually, being taken from the children of Israel. So if you, how you go to church? Yeah, I'm a seven day Adventist. We go to church on Saturday. All right, where's your genealogy of the Jewish people? Uh -huh. Do you know you're no better than Jehovah Witnesses? Huh? Because the Jehovah Witnesses take the promises and steal the promises of the children. We're of the 144,000. 144,000 are Jews. We honor and keep the Sabbath and the dietary law. That's for Jews. Not Gentiles. And what you're doing is you're saying God is all finished with the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And we the greatest Gentiles in all the world. We're the great, And we're the one. We're going to steal the promises of the children of Israel. Because God is God loves us more. And as far as the children of Israel, God's all finished with them. We're the greatest. We're the standard. We're the out. And you're a liar. You're a sinner. And you need to repent of your sin. God is not and will not ever be finished with the children of Israel. They are his people. That Sabbath is his people. The Jews. No Gentiles. 25.2 Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, When you come into the land, Israel, that land that is called Israel, which I give you, he, then shall ye keep a Sabbath unto the Lord. In six years, six years thou shalt sow my field. Six years thou shalt prune thy vineyard and gather the fruit there. But the seventh year shall be a Sabbath of rest. Oh, wait a minute. We got a Sabbath of the first day of the seventh month. We got the Sabbath of the seventh day of the week. Now we have a Sabbath of the seventh year. 
So do your seven-day Adventists and anybody who keeps the law and had the dietary law, do they take the seventh year completely off and do nothing? I trod not. Seventh day event is not just seven day event, is it's the seventh month, the first day of the month, and it's every seventh year. Go ask your seven day Adventist friend if they keep the seventh year and say, Well, living is 25 says one through four, there's a seventh day, there's a seventh year of rest in a land that is not the land of America. It's the land of Israel given by God to Israel. Don't you think the man, you know, God shed his grace on thee from purple mountains from sea to shining sea? Idiot! It's not a sea, it's two oceans. Dummies. It's the Atlantic Ocean and the Pacific Ocean. That's not sea to sea. I know a place that's got sea to sea. It's got the Mediterranean Sea and the Great uh, and the Salt Sea. Oh, huh. who's trying to steal what from the Jews? Look at your map. America's between two oceans, not seas. There's a seventh year of rest. I don't think the Adventists keep holding. They can't keep holding seventh day rest. Again, their hospital. Oh yeah, the higher ups, the the, the the higher oracles and all that, they don't work. But didn't it say manservant and maidservant? That would be your nurse, your volunteers, your laundry, your food. Pharisees would have a good time with them. I'm just trying to tell you what the Bible says. We're doing the Ten Commandments, aren't we? Oh boy, Ten Commandments! I wish he'd shut up. Exodus 16.23 I don't like when Stolly teaches the Bible. He kicks. He has teeth. No, the Bible kicks. The Bible has teeth. The Bible is called a sharp-edged sword. Joints and marrow. Exodus 16.23 And he said unto him, This is what, that which the Lord has said. Tomorrow is the rest of the sa Holy Sabbath. It's called a Holy Sabbath. I don't know what set apart. Bake that which you will bake today, and seed that which you will seed. This is the manna, and that remains overlay up for the you to be kept until the morning. All right, Moses said, "Okay, children of Israel, yes, sir. No, not children of Israel, not the Gentiles. Israel, yeah, you're not to cook anything on the Sabbath day. Okay, you cook today, and you get leftovers tomorrow. Oh, okay, no problem." No cooking. You cannot strike a match and light a fire on the Sabbath day. Okay. How the seven day Adventists do they kindle their stove? Again, the hospital. I, on the Sabbath day, would call up and say, Hi, I want one of your hamburgers. Okay, we'll send it up to your room. What else you want? I want a lettuce, a uh, salad. And they would make the hamburgers, and they would make the salad, and they would bring it to me, and they are in violation of the law. They would have to call me on Friday and say, Stolly, what do you want tomorrow on Saturday? Because it's our se we're the seven-day Adventists, and we will have to make it on Friday. But we can't deliver it to you on Saturday because we can't do no survival. Does a seven-day Adventist start his car on the seventh day to go to church? Is that not a spark? Is that not work? Does that make a fire in the uh, cylinder of the automobile? Do they not drive to, to services on the Sabbath? You're violating. There was a man picking up sticks and God said, kill him. God said, here. No cooking on the Sabbath. Try your law keepers on that one. 1626. Six days ye shall gather it. But on the seventh day, which is the Sabbath, in it there shall be none. Go out 
gather the manna six days. That manna is going to be out there every morning six days. But on the sixth day, you're going to get a double portion because on the seventh day, that manna won't be there. Do seven the day adventures even stop off to get gasoline at the gas station on the Sabbath? You're not supposed to get Friday. There is no supply and demand here the manna on the Sabbath day for the nation of Israel, not Gentile again. But if you want to be a seven day Adventist, you want to be under the law, you cannot do anything on that Sabbath day. That's what they got angry with Jesus. They got angry because the disciples took some uh, wheat and they were rubbing in their hands and, and having the, the kernels of the wheat. Jesus, you healed on the Sabbath. You did work. And yet you can bring your animals out to get them water. You couldn't work the animals, but you bring the animals out and you do circumcision. Leviticus 23. Leviticus 23. 39. I hate to pick on one religion. It's not like usually bash the Jehovah Witnesses and the Catholic. Well, we come up to the commandments and this is between the seven day. I'm going to kick who I need to kick from the Bible. So if you are a seven day Adventist, you will go smack yourself in the head and say, wow, I'm wrong. They're wrong. I need to get right. I need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Glory to God. I don't hate you. I want you to get right in the Lord. I want you to be correct in the Bible. I want you to rightly divide so you will not be ashamed. Seven day Adventists will be ashamed at the judgment seat of Christ or at the great white throne judgment. If they do not repent of their sins and they do not get right with God and do what the Bible correctly tells them to do, they'll be made ashamed. Admit your shame now, confess your sins now, and get right now. The figure is 23 to 39. Also the fifteenth day of the seventh month, when ye have gathered the, in the fruit of the land, ye shall keep a feast of the Lord seven days, and the first day shall be a Sabbath. Uh-oh. No, okay, in the seventh month, on the first day of the seventh month, there's a Sabbath. The fifteenth day of the seventh month is a Sabbath. The seventh day of vintage, okay? Forget the year, it says day. First day of the seventh month, how about the fifteenth day of the seventh month? That's another Sabbath day. And probably not Saturday. I, I don't know Jewish calendars and all that enough to say. I know the Jewish calendar, the first begins on the new moon. They're a lunar calendar. There are other days of Sabbath days in the Bible besides the seventh day. But I guess we... Legally purposes, we say we're the seventh day Adventists. We don't have to follow the other Sabbath. Wow, was that a big loophole? Twenty-five four. But in the seventh year shall be a Sabbath of rest, and this is the Sabbath rent year that we. There's a Sabbath of rest. Six years, farm the land, take care of the land. Well, the land, dig holes in the land, do what you need to do in the land. That seventh year, you leave the land alone. You don't prune, you don't, you don't do nothing. You eat of your canned goods and you eat what God supplied you. Here it is. 25, 4, 23, 24. 23, 24. And. Again, this is the seventh day of the first month. We already read this. Other Sabbath days. Sabbath year. That was 23, 24. 23, 32. And it shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest. Ye shall not afflict your souls on the ninth day of the month. Here's another one. From even to even, 6 p.m. to 6 p.m., shall ye celebrate your Sabbath. Look, there's no fasting, I am told, with this verse. I think I'm going to fast for the Lord. Not on the Sabbath, you're not. Not this day. Then I'm going to go on a diet. Not on this day. Okay. 
John 19.31. John 19.31. John 1931, and this is in 1931. Therefore, I mean, 31, the Jews, therefore, the, the Jews, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Christ has died. One third of the gospel, the Jews, therefore, because it was a preparation that the body should not be made upon the cross on the Sabbath day. For that Sabbath day was a high day. Now you know what the error is on this one? This is Good Friday. This Sabbath day was a high day. This Sabbath was not the seventh day Sabbath. It was not the Sabbath of the uh, of Saturday. It was another Sabbath that we looked at. This Sabbath happened on a Wednesday. And three days and three nights from Wednesday becomes the first day of the week. When Christ arose and we saw that already. This is not Friday going into Saturday. That is a lie by the Catholic Church. Boy, have we hit religions on this. And what's so good about Good Friday that our Savior was tortured and killed brutality for our sins? That's not good. Jesus Christ died on the Sabbath, not on Saturday. He died on another Sabbath day which we've already read about other Sabbath days which people don't study in the Bible. They will be made ashamed Rightly dividing, it says a high day. It was a Sabbath beyond the Sabbath. And when after Jesus Christ died, the people, the Jewish people, were having a Sabbath day of rest. The women were sitting home, not doing anything, according to the Saturday Sabbath. And on the first day of the week, when the Saturday Sabbath ended, then they brought the spices to the tomb. There were two Sabbaths that week, Wednesday and Saturday. Plain and simple. Great what the Bible teaches us. Exodus 12, 16. Exodus 12, 16. Exodus 12, 16. Exodus 12, 16. Hope I didn't make you mad. I hope it made you think, ooh, wow. Exodus 12, 16. It shall be the first day there shall be a holy convocation, and in the seventh day there shall be a holy convocation unto you. No manner of work shall be done in them, save that ye, which every man must eat. That only may be done of you. There are other seven. That is the Passover. And we are in the Passover. We are in the going into the Feast of Weeks. The, the Passover land that died, died on another Sabbath that's not Saturday. And people say, well, I'm Paul Onlyism. I'm not. We've gone through Exodus, Leviticus. We've gone through Acts. We've gone through many books of the Bible. Not many of the Pauline epistles. Nowhere does Paul say, keep the Sabbath to be holy. Nowhere. And when we have done the Ten Commandments, we have gone where, where Paul has written, Thou shalt not. We have gone where Paul says, Thou shalt not take the Lord's name in vain. We have not found, as far as the Sabbath, Paul to tell the church, keep the Sabbath. We find for the church age, the first day of the week. We find before Calvary, Jews were to keep the Sabbath day. There are days. There are years. In honor of the seventh day, the created work of God, that the children of Israel are God's people. 
that in the book of Acts, they had their services in temple or synagogue. They would meet on the Sabbath day, and the law and the prophets were read to them and taught. Paul would use that opportunity to witness and preach the gospel to Jews and Gentiles who were present. But when it came to the gathering of the Christians, they met on the first day of the week. And Paul said, when you're going to bring your offerings and everything, bring them on the first day of the week, not the Sabbath. So there's the Sabbath day. And many have been deceived and misled. The Sabbath is for Jews. And when a Jewish person, man or woman, gets saved under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, he removes himself from the Sabbath and comes to the first day of the week. The resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's our day. But as far as the Sabbath and the first day of the week, the Bible says this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us be glad to rejoice in it every day. Ought to be a holy day for those that are saved. 